Hi everyone, this is Sunny from Database Tech. So today I had come up with one more new session on SQL Server Database. In today's session, I will explain how we can get last identity column value from a table. As you can see, we have various methods like scope identity, at the rate identity, and identity current. With use of these methods, we can get the last identity column value from a table. So let's understand them one by one. Now, what is scope identity? It works in same session and same scope. What does that mean? Let's understand this in SQL Server practically. This is SQL Server. And before we start, we first need to understand what is identity and how does it work. And to understand this, let's create one table name as test1. Command completed successfully, which means our table has been created. Now what's next? We will insert some data in this table. As you can see, we have two columns defined in this table. So we have to insert two values. Let's do that. One row affected. And if you have to check the data from a table, which query you can use? Select query. So let's execute the select query and see the output from table, which is one and Mahesh, the data that we inserted. But this table that we created for which we inserted data is without the identity column. There is no identity column in this table. Now we will create one more table name as test2 in which we will define one column as an identity and then we'll see the difference. Let's do that. There is one small change, rest it will be same. How to set identity? You have to use identity keyword and you can also use the parameters. Don't worry about the parameters, I will show you later. But first, let's understand this identity. How does it work? So let's create this table now. Command complete successfully. Now what's next? We will insert some data. We have two columns, so we are inserting two values. But here for test two table, we are getting error. Why? Because if we have we are defining some column as an identity, then we don't need to pass value to that column. It becomes auto incremented. So we cannot pass value to that column. So that's why we are getting error. But now then how we can insert the data for this table, we have to remove this one and have to insert data for name column only. Let's do that. One row affected, which means data has been inserted. Now let's check the data from this table. One and lucky, which we have inserted. But you will be thinking like, well, we have not inserted one, then how does this one came here in ID? It's because of the parameters that we used here, one and one. What these parameters mean? The first one, the first parameter, it is a seed value. And the second is the incremental value. Seed value means that it will start from this value that you will give here. So here you had given one, so it will start from one. If you may have given here two, then let's check this, whether it is working or not. So first draw this table, create this table again, now with seed value as two, and insert the data using insert query, check the data now from the select, you can see ID is now two, which means it will start from two, the, val the value that we had given in seed value. Similarly, you can give three, four, whatever you need, which again depends on the requirement. If you want to start from six or seven or eight or some other integer, you can do that. Now, what is the second value? This is incremental value. It will give an increment of one when you insert new row. Let's try that. 
when you will insert the data let's check the data again from this using select query you will see it's now three so it's giving an increment of one for each row when you insert that if you if you want to change this and want to give an increment of two or three you can do that just try this so we had made this now three to test this we have to drop this table again and then create this insert the data check the data the first value it is 2 because it is a seed value when again you insert the data you can see it will give an increment of 3 now it's coming 5 so it's getting an increment of 5 if you insert one more row then it will be 5 6 7 8 okay in that way so now you have understood what is identity how does it work and how we can utilize the parameters now coming to the definition again we have to understood now what is scope identity and how it works in same session and same scope let's understand this so what was the last inserted value for the identity column it is 5 so we need this value how we can get this which is our requirement so this is our requirement like we need the last inserted value for the identity column we can use select scope identity when we execute this you can see we are getting 5 which is working as expected but then in the definition it's saying it works in same session then what is session this is one session and if you need to open another session what you can do you can click on new query so one more session will open session you can give a name as session 2 if you now copy this and paste it here will this give the same output that it has given here 5 let's check that no it's giving us null which means it will work in the same session it will not work in another session now what is scope scope is its scope is only till this insert query if you are inserting some other value like ashu okay so we are inserting this name as ashu one row affected Let's check the data. Right now it's 8. So last inserted value is 8. So if we execute this select scope identity, it will give us 8. So its scope is only till this insert query. Now moving to next method which is add the rate identity. It works in same session and across any scope. The difference here is it works across any scope and the scope identity it works in same scope let's understand this now select add the rate identity now let's execute them together both are giving the same output 8 and 8 then what is the difference first we will try to execute this in another session and see it's working or not it should give us 8 but it is giving us null which means both methods are working in the same session they will not work in another session now the next thing is it works across any scope how we can test that for that we have to create one trigger so let's create trigger what is the syntax if you are not aware of trigger you can go through my previous session for same create trigger trigger name on test 2 for insert so what we are doing we are creating trigger on table test 2 for insert we can create trigger for insert for update for delete but for now let's create trigger for insert 
as begin and it follows the same structure that we use in stored procedure so we had given as as begin and end now we will write our query in between begin and end clause so what we do here we will insert into test three values one sunny okay so this is one more table name as test three we are creating trigger on test two and in that we are inserting data in test three so we had three tables test one test two and test three so here we are creating trigger on test two for insert and inserting data in test three which is a different table now let's execute this first command completed successfully our trigger is created now how we can call this trigger it will not get called like we cannot call this trigger directly then how we can call this we have to when we insert data because this trigger is created for insert so when we insert data in this test two table this trigger name as trigger insert will get invoked and whatever the code you may have written here in the begin and end clause it will get executed so how we can call this now we have to insert into test two values let's insert uh, suresh okay and do we have test three table so let's create that first we'll create one more table create table test three with same number of columns id and name insert the data okay so we have what data we have in test three it is one and mahesh it means we have one row now come to this trigger again let's execute this to call this trigger name as trigger insert you can see one row affected and one row affected why we have two rows affected first it will insert data in this test two table this is one row affected because we are inserting data in test two table and second one row affected is for this one because when we execute this the trigger get called and the code whatever we have here this will get executed and here we are doing insert so one row affected is for this uh, the data we have we are inserting in test 3 table so we are inserting value sunny now if you check the data you can see select star from test 3 earlier we had only one row now if we check again you can see we have inserted the second row from trigger which is 2 and sunny now you have to notice here one thing if we execute this select scope identity it's giving us 11 why because see in select star from test 2 we have inserted data in test 2 so its scope was only till insert query so what data we have let's check this first you can see it's 11 so last inserted value is 11 so the scope identity is giving us copy it here so that you can, everything will be in the same picture it's giving us 11 which is expected but now let's execute this one add the rate identity it's giving us two why because earlier when we check we saw that both functions are giving us same output but then here why it's giving us two because see scope identity gives us that value which we are having in this test to table but when we executed this query what happens what happened this trigger get 
executed and in this trigger we have one more insert query so if you will see if you will notice here that is the last inserted value for the identity column but here the across the scope chains when we create a trigger the scope chains from test to the scope chains to this test three table then actually if you will see the last inserted value was for test three table but for scope identity the scope was only for this test two table it didn't give us that value from test three table but at the rate identity gives us that because why because at the rate identity works across any scope even if the scope changes from here test two table to test three which we did from trigger it gives us that last inserted value but scope identity only gives us the value from test two table because its scope was only till this insert query not this one so you may have you may have now understood the difference between these two so that was the difference it works across any scope but its scope is only in the same in the same session in the same it works in same session and same scope that we have seen now coming to next method identity current now how does this work let's understand this as well it works in same it works across any session so the two methods that we have seen earlier they worked in same session but it works across any session and any scope it's working across any scope and any session so let's check this now how to execute this what's the syntax to call this method select identity current but here the difference is we have to provide the table name let's give table 2 test 2 table if we execute this let's see what we get we are getting 11 and from scope identity also we were getting 11 that's true because we are providing the table name if we give here test 3 it should give us which is another table it should give us 2 so it's working as expected but now we have to check will this work in another session also because earlier two methods were not working in any session so they were working in same session let's check for this method it's working so it's giving us the output in any session and across any scope so here you can see that when we okay here it was where was it okay so here the scope was for test 3 it was the scope was inside that if we give this test 3 we get from the trigger so it's working across any scope and across any because here what is this giving it's giving 2 so that identity current is also giving us two which means this method is working across any scope and any session so that were these three methods that we have done we have understood so from these methods we can get the last identity column value and you can use any method again which depends on the requirement whatever the requirement you have you can use them accordingly So that was it for today's session. I hope you have understood it and in case not you can provide your comments so that I can reply back. And if you like it today's today's session you can subscribe my channel. With this let's wrap up the session for today. We'll come up with the next session shortly. Till then have a nice day. Bye bye. Take care. Be healthy and be safe.